Hello everyone, my name is Richard from Home Tech Video. This is the part two video of my clips and archiving. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can have certain cameras record for longer periods of time than others, and also how you can have one of your cameras store the alerts for longer periods of time if it's recording continuously. So for example, I have all of my cameras, I have seven cameras on my system, and I have a three terabyte drive. When all seven of my cameras are recording continuously, I usually only get around 14 days of continuous recording. However, there are certain times that I would like to store my video clips um, or alerts longer than when I have it going continuously. So for example, over here I have an 18 video, uh, 18 second clip of my wife backing out of the driveway. And this clip is for 18 seconds. Uh, but there is not a easy way or a default way of having clips stored and saved for longer periods of time. Uh, this is uh, this this video file is saved within the continuous uh, video file, and after 14 days, this clip would would, would normally be deleted. So I'm going to show you how you can have this 18 second video clip stored for as long as you want. So in my example, I am going to have my video clips saved much longer than the default uh, drive capacity on my system, which uh, normally, like I said earlier, was only 14 days. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I'm going to show you how to set this up. So the first thing that you want to do when you're setting up your alert storage folder to have this stored for a longer amount of time is to go into your clips and archiving tab. And then under any of your auxiliaries, I'm just going to use auxiliary one, and I name this stored alerts. Uh, you're going to go, go ahead and set up the directory of where you want your alerts to be stored for. Now, by default, on, under my stored folder, I use the D drive. This is my only drive that I have on this computer that I store all my videos to. I went ahead and created another folder and I named it stored alerts. Now what you want to also do is make sure that you, when you're setting your uh, drive limit size, you want to make sure that you don't over allocate your drive like I talked about in the first video. So if I go in here and I set this to something like 500 gigs and save it, when you go into your clips and archiving store, uh, cl clips and archiving section, you want to make sure that you didn't over allocate the drive. Um, in this example, I over allocated by 357 gigs what I would want to do is go back in here and under the stored folder, which I have this set you know, much larger than the other folder, I would take out 350 gigs out of this section. So it's, it's limiting the stored section lower to allow you to store more in this other folder. But I'm going to set this back to 100 gigs because this is what I have mine set to and this is, I get about uh, estimated around um, about two months worth of storage when I have it set up this way. So. I'm going to go back in here and I set it back to 100 gigs um, for my alerts and now I'm within, I'm not over allocated so I'm good on here. So now <clears throat> I have the auxiliary one set up, it's set to 100 gigs worth of storage. The next thing you want to do is to, the only easy way of doing this is to actually clone the camera. Okay, so the next thing that you want to do is clone the camera that you want to have recording longer um, when the camera gets triggered. In this example, I'm going to be using my backdoor camera, this one right here. So what I want to do is go over, over to the plus sign and add the camera in. I'm going to, you can name this whatever you want. I'm going to name this just cloned back camera. And the short name is just going to be CBC, cloned back camera. And then under the type, copy from another camera. And you're going to copy from the camera that you're currently wanting to clone, which is right here, back and then just hit OK. It's going to open up the um, new properties for the camera that you're going to be cloning. Go over to the Record tab, and then under Profile 1, which is my default profile, go to When Triggered, because I only want this to stay, uh, save the video footage when it's triggered, and then under the folder, select the folder that you want it to save to. And then I'm going to save this to the Stored Alerts. And then also go over here to Copy Paste All, because I want this to be saved to all of my profiles. I don't want this to change and only go, <laughs> only only work when it's under the at work profile, or profile one. So I'm gonna hit copy paste all, and then hit okay. So now that this camera is cloned, anytime that this camera gets triggered, it's going to store into the stored alerts folder. I'm gonna go ahead and manually trigger this, like this. Boom. And now it's gonna store for however long time I have the trigger time set to and store in the stored alerts folder for up to whatever you have, whatever you have set to the 
size limit here. So the last thing I want to show you is that when you clone a camera, you want to probably hide that clone camera from your live view if you're using the app or if you're trying to log in from another server. So um, that way that you're not seeing multiple um, duplicates of cameras that you've cloned. To do this, it's pretty easy. What you want to do is right click on the uh, cloned camera, go into camera properties, and then under the general tab, you're going to just check on hidden and then hit OK. So now this is going to hide the camera when you have, um, if I right click on here and I have um, hide and act, or I'm sorry, show hidden cameras is not checked. So if I have this checked, it's going to show me the hidden cameras that I have unchecked. It's going to hide the cameras from the Blue Iris app or Blue Iris program. In the Android app, what you want to do is go into your settings by clicking on the three dashes at the top left and then going into settings and then scrolling to the bottom and then under hide camera, you're going to click on hidden. What this is going to do is going to hide any of the cameras that you've already duplicated. That way, when you go and view your live camera feed, you're not seeing multiple cameras that you've already cloned. And then finally, if you use a iPhone, what you'd want to do is click on the little gear icon here and then scroll down and then click on hidden cameras and then make sure that you circle the or check on the hidden uh, option to disable the hidden cameras. So I hope this video helps you understand a little bit better on how to use the clips and archiving section of Blue Iris. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. Have a great day. Thanks.